Hermes Trismegistus, a revered Hellenistic sage, earned the title thrice greatest for his mastery over the three planes of existence, physical, mental, and spiritual. Rooted in his wisdom are the timeless teachings of the seven hermetic principles, which were passed down from teacher to student over generations. Eventually, the teachings were compiled into a book called the Kabbalion. Today, they remain an indispensable source of wisdom for truth seekers everywhere. The Principle of Mentalism The principle states that everything in the cosmos consists of thought and is created by thought. There are no such things as physical objects because everything you see in the cosmos is thought solidified. The universal mind, an embodiment of the divine essence, is in all things, including ourselves. What we perceive as physical matter is a manifestation of a higher, all-encompassing intelligence. Embracing this fundamental tenet leads to a profound shift in perspective. You cease being a passive onlooker in the theater of reality and instead step onto the stage as an active participant. Through the power of thought, you mold your surroundings, shape your experiences, and chart the course of your destiny. In this realization, you assume your rightful place as a co-creator with the divine. Just as divine intelligence is the spark that brings galaxies into being, you craft your own unique story within the larger cosmic picture. By carefully cultivating your mental landscape, you till the fertile ground of your mind. This allows your desires to flourish without interference. But keep in mind that a garden only flourishes when meticulously cared for. This means that the garden of our thoughts requires lots of attention. Like a gardener removing weeds, we must uproot doubts, fears, and self-imposed limitations that get in the way of fulfilling our desires. The Principle of Correspondence The principle of correspondence means that as above, so below. As within, so without. There are infinite planes of reality that reflect each other. All are interconnected. In other words, what happens on the physical plane affects the mental and spiritual planes and vice versa. Everything corresponds to each other. Nothing stands independently except universal oneness. By exploring the principle of correspondence, the planes of existence we can't perceive become comprehensible to us. That's because we know that they reflect the planes we can see. For example, the earthly plane is a reflection of higher dimensions. The cosmos is a mirror of God. The planets orbiting around the sun resemble atoms and the electrons that circle them. The Fibonacci patterns seen on weather maps mirror the growth of plants. As a seeker of truth, you can tell what's happening in the higher planes of consciousness by observing the world around you, and, most importantly, what's going on inside you. Get the inside right, and the outside will take care of itself. The Principle of Vibration Everything in the universe is constantly moving, whether you can see it or not. While modern science has verified this as truth, as a hermetic principle, it's been known for thousands of years. As a spiritual seeker, you're always mindful that you're a moving wave in the ocean of divine consciousness. You've been in motion since time immemorial, and will not stop for all eternity. How energy manifests depends on its vibrational rate. From spirit down to the grossest forms of matter, everything is vibrating. This principle explains that differences between manifestations of energy, matter, mind, and spirit result from varying rates of vibration. From subatomic particles to the rotations of galaxies, nothing is at rest. But the vibration of spirit is so rapid that if you could see it, it would look like it was standing still, just as a rapidly spinning wheel appears motionless. Not only is every molecule in the universe vibrating at a specific rate, but our thoughts and emotions are too. 
When we communicate with others, we perceive whether or not we trust somebody based on their vibe. Similarly, our emotions have vibrations. A happy person can affect how a sad person feels by helping the person feel emotions that vibrate at a higher rate. The principle that everything vibrates is valid for all aspects of life. By being aware of vibration, we can consciously alter virtually every part of our existence. For example, we can choose thoughts, foods, colors, and sounds with higher vibrations. When we know that everything vibrates, we also know that by raising the vibration of our consciousness, we can manifest what we want. The Principle of Polarity We live in a world of stark contrasts. For example, light and darkness, rich and poor, and good and evil. We can never know one thing without knowing the opposite of that thing. All opposites are two sides of the same coin. To paraphrase the Kabbalion, like and unlike are the same. Extremes meet in the end. All truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes will eventually be reconciled. Happiness and sadness are part of the same emotional spectrum, but vary in degree and vibrations. Heat and cold are simply the two poles of what we call temperature. In Hinduism, the creator god, Brahma, sprang from the cosmic golden egg, creating good and evil, light and dark, and all other polarities. Adam and Eve were plunged headlong into duality when they ate the forbidden fruit. Instead of only knowing good, they were also made aware of its polar opposite, evil. However, since they're both on the same spectrum, there's good in evil and evil in good. Oscar Wilde said, The saint and the sinner are just exchanging notes. Every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. The purest among us struggle with diabolical impulses occasionally, and so-called evil people can carry out uplifting acts. There is yin in yang and yang in yin. They're opposite forces, yet they perfectly complement each other. Spiritual masters use yin to balance yang, and vice versa. Therefore, the master is in perfect harmony with the totality of existence. Love and hate are two ways of experiencing the same thing, how we feel about something. This insight is the foundation of mental alchemy, or the ability to transmute experiences at will. By embracing the principle of polarity, you can transform hate into love and sadness into happiness. If you want to try this, observe the emotion you're feeling. Then, raise your vibrational rate so that the emotion becomes its opposite. Any time a lower emotion brings you down, transmute it into a more positive one. Or you can try to stay in the middle. This is where you balance all extremes and therefore transcend duality. It's something the Buddhists call the middle way. So, if you want to apply the principle of polarity, don't see the universe in shades of black and white. See the goodness in every bad situation and seek out the opportunities in challenges. For example, losing your material possessions because the economy collapsed means you get to explore the vast storehouse of spiritual treasures waiting to be discovered in the innermost recesses of your soul. The Principle of Rhythm Without the rhythms that compose all physical processes, the universe would come to a screeching halt. Life is cyclic. Everything has a movement backwards and forwards, an inflow and outflow. You see it in such things as the rising and setting of the sun, our moods and emotions. Rhythms are evident in the ebb and flow of the tides and the change from winter to spring. We die only to be reborn in a new body. Another example of this principle in action is the circadian rhythm, a 24-hour cycle that regulates sleep. Newton's third law of motion also speaks of the principle of rhythm. For every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. The law of compensation is part of this principle. It states that a swing in one direction determines how far it swings in the opposite direction. One thing counterbalances the other thing. 
We see many examples of this law on the physical plane. The clock's pendulum swings to the right and then an equal distance to the left. It even applies to mental states. The man with an intense capacity for enjoyment sometimes suffers equally as intensely. Those who don't feel pain aren't typically capable of feeling joy. Before you can enjoy a certain degree of pleasure, you must first swing that far towards the other pole of feeling. But they say that experiencing a certain amount doesn't mean you'll have to pay for it with a corresponding degree of pain. Instead, the pleasure you experience balances the pain you experience in your past, either your current or a past life. Embrace life's mysterious rhythms instead of resisting them. That way, you go with the flow of divine intelligence. Then your life will have an easy, effortless quality. By understanding that everything in the universe operates on rhythmic cycles, we realize that all states of mind, whether grief and pain or joy and happiness, are temporary. The pendulum eventually swings the other way. Because the all-encompassing bliss of God never fades away, we find refuge in it instead of transitory pleasures. Doing this can help accelerate our spiritual awakening. The Principle of Cause and Effect This principle states that there is no such thing as chance. Everything happens for a reason, and every effect has a cause. If you want to take responsibility for your life, don't complain about effects. Instead, discover the cause so you can change the outcome at its source. The Kabbalion says, Every cause has its effect, every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. So, many individuals allow themselves to be buffeted willy-nilly by the celestial winds, not realizing that they can seize the reins of their lives anytime they want. They let heredity, other people's wishes, and myriad outward causes blow them this way and that. They become victims of circumstances instead of taking destiny by the horns. By taking full responsibility for your life, you empower yourself to create the life of your wildest dreams. Once you do that, your existence will change virtually overnight. The Principle of Gender Masculine and feminine energy are the essence of creation. Divine consciousness split into these two seemingly opposite forces even before the Big Bang. True creation isn't possible without balancing feminine and masculine energies. That's why spiritually awakened beings ensure these energies work together for good. They know that balancing masculine and feminine energies is the key to unlocking the full potential of their ability to manifest things. If you're a man, you cultivate the divine masculine in you while balancing the divine feminine. If you're a woman, you do the reverse. For example, we see the sacred dance of masculine and feminine energies in the creation of atoms or through the union of electrons. We get light, heat, electricity, magnetism, and chemical affinity by combining positive and negative charges with vibration. Without the feminine, masculine energy will act without consequence, not considering how its actions impact the totality. The feminine without the masculine would be able to envision new things, but fail to manifest them into reality. With masculine and feminine working in tandem, our visions can become gloriously real. Final Thoughts By practicing the seven hermetic principles, you'll become the being of unparalleled light the Creator intended you to be. You'll find yourself ascending ever upward on a trajectory that never ends. One day, you'll embody unity consciousness, the ability to feel a part of the cosmos. No longer will you feel adrift in an uncaring sea, cut off from everything and everyone around you. Your extended body will be the sun, the moon, the stars, and even faraway galaxies. This is a fraction of what you can achieve using these principles.